Greetings and salutations, and thank you for clicking on the video. Figured I'd hang out with you for a little while, talk about some of the stuff that I am into right now. It is a gorgeous Saturday morning here. We have had an incredibly hot week in my corner of the world. Temperature's up near 100. It's been really oppressive, and this is the first nice day that we've had in quite some time. First thing I want to talk about is Linux Mint 18.2. I posted two or three videos about it recently. I did one where I showed you how to upgrade from 18 or 18.1 to 18.2 and also did a video called An Introduction to Linux Mint 18.2 where I went through an entire install. A lot of folks have seen those videos, a lot of folks have done the upgrade or installed it and pretty much all of the feedback that I have gotten has been positive. Everybody really likes it. Linux Mint knocked it out of the park this time around. Great distribution of Linux for anybody who wants to start out with Linux. Now this is running in a virtual machine. That's what this little menu is up there. And the desktop theme that I'm using is Mint Y Dark and I am using the Mint Y icon. So if you like this and you want to give it a try, it's already in the system. Just go to themes, open it up, and you got it. No big deal at all. I did get a couple of people who said that after they upgraded that they had some slight issues. One fellow told me that he was having problems with his Wi-Fi staying connected. I advised him to roll his kernel back from the 4.8 series to the 4.4 series. Hopefully that will fix the problem for him. Because once you do the upgrade, as I said in the video where I was talking about the upgrade, you can't downgrade. So if he wanted to go back to 18.1, he would have to reinstall. But Changing the kernel ought to help his uh, Wi-Fi driver issue. Most other folks, they've said that they've had no problems at all. At one point in time, I had this running on four machines in my house. And, well, actually, no, three. I had this running on three machines, including a virtual machine. And all of them worked really, really well. And right now, it is running on the family laptop machine that everybody uses. My son uses that to play a lot of games and the performance of his games improved with the upgrade. It That machine had been running Linux Mint 17.3. My mom's computer was running Linux Mint 17.3 as well, and I decided to go ahead and upgrade her, not because she was having any issues with it, but I thought maybe I could get a little better performance out of her older computer. She's got one of those Dell Inspiron Baby AT real small form factor desktop computers and it's got an Intel Celeron single core in it and it's got four gigs of memory. I wanted to see what it would do. She is just tickled pink about it. She loves it. Um, everything has improved for her as well. So awesome sauce. Kudos to Linux Mint. And while I really have enjoyed using Linux Mint 18.2, it's kind of been too perfect. <laughs> so I needed a challenge, ladies and gentlemen. So my challenge has been Ubuntu Gnome 1604. Those of you who have followed my channel for a while know that I have been flirting with this for quite some time. And the last couple of times that I installed it, I ran into some major issues and ended up running back to Mint. But I want to play with the Gnome desktop. Yeah, I know some folks call it Gnome. I call it Gnome. And so I've had this running <laughs> kind of here and there for a long time. And this is what you get when you first install it. And the only thing that I've done here is activate the desktop. When you first install it, nothing works. You get no active desktop, that sort of thing. And this is the Adwaita theme. Ad, I guess that's how you are. Adwaita or Adwaita. And this is the standard GNOME 3 theme. And this is the standard GNOME shell theme that comes with it. So kind of wanted you to get a look at that. Now what you can do, as, as I've pointed out in past videos, is that you can turn on a global dark theme. And that makes it pretty cool, because I like dark themes, but then it doesn't work with every application that you run. So some applications don't come up in the dark theme. It's a little inconsistent. And uh, this time around, I installed it, and I decided that I was going to do something a little bit different. I was going to customize it from scratch and find a theme that I really liked. So let's go through here. And this is what I came up with. This is my desktop. And 
this is a theme called Obsidian. So let's get a clear screen here because that one's got the screen recorder running on it. Uh, this is the Obsidian One Green theme, which is kind of cool because when you get it, you'll get the entire gnome shell theme. So it's not just uh, not just the GTK theme, but also the gnome shell itself. And if you're brand new to Linux and you don't know what I'm talking about, this is one of the reasons that I don't necessarily say that anything with the GNOME 3 desktop is the place to start for somebody who is coming to Linux brand new. The interface is definitely much different than you're used to. You can find that theme, by the way, on gnomelook.org. That's where you can get it. It's on the list. There's many, many themes up there. So I really like the way this looks. I like the way this is performing. Um, I got a kind of a new machine to play with, and that's this little guy right here. It is a Pavilion G6, HP Pavilion, and long story how this machine ended up in my lap, but it's a used computer, uh, vintage 2011. The one that I have has 8 gigabytes of memory in it, has a 500 gigabyte hard drive. I thought it was an SSD at first, but it's actually, nah, it's a, just a Toshiba 500 gigabyte regular drive, spinning drive. Not bad. It, with 8 gigabytes of memory in it, the machine is pretty peppy, and it's got an i3 processor in it. So this is where I installed GNOME 1604, Ubuntu 1604 first off and played around with that a little bit and then I said let me put this on the other machine as well let's see how this does let's see how long I can live in it now one of the things I really like about GNOME is this right here and that is the fact that you just go and click on activities and then you start typing and it will find whatever you want to find on the computer because it has GNOME tracker in there so one of the things that I found out was let me see if I can get that again you have to type in the right stuff or it won't be able to find it. Uh, there's one little tweak that you have to do to the desktop here, and that is you have to add this to the ETC environment file. And what this does is it allows GNOME to actually render Qt5 applications properly. Because <laughs> that's another issue that I have always had with this desktop is the fact that some apps, if they're Qt based, they don't work right. Uh, for instance, like VirtualBox, and that's a Qt app, and it just didn't look right. So let's open that up. Let me show you what that's rendering like here. That's the way it ought to look. It's following the GTK theme, and it's doing what it needs to do. And so now that I have that little bugaboo conquered, I figured, yeah, I can actually look at this and use it all the time. But that thing about finding things on the computer, that's my favorite feature. There are two desktops that do this really, really well. There's GNOME 3, and the other one would be the KDE Plasma 5 desktop with the kicker menu. That menu is awesome. Just, open, just you know, all you do is tap the super key or the Windows key, whatever you want to call that, and you start typing. So if I want to find a song, you know, and I want to listen to Billy Joel, Look, it's like the first thing that pops up. There's Billy Joel full albums right there. So I can go in here and look at all my Billy Joel albums and start playing music. I mean, yeah, it's really not that great for that kind of search, but still, I mean, for just finding a file somewhere on the computer. And that you can set up. A lot of this is very highly customizable, which is really cool. So let's go into settings here. We'll take a look. And you go to search and then you can turn on and turn off what you want searched like here it's searching the calculator I don't know what you're searching on a calculator I really don't but there you go the calendar and then it'll search through the software application to suggest software if you want it to search the terminal uh, I'm not quite sure like I said so I turned a lot I turned some of these off and then you can add to it too so Let's go down here. Like, for instance, I have a folder called audio, which contains a bunch of production music, air checks from radio stations, just odds and ends. It's not music. It's like stuff that's not music. It's production pieces of some sort or another. So I want it to search here, and then you can just add more if you want to. You, it'll just come up, and 
you say, well, if, if for some reason stuff's not coming up in the search, you have extra stuff in there. I can put these chart hit archives in here. This is just a crap ton of music for the system to search through. I'm not really going to add this because there's like 40,000 files in here. It's not really efficient to search it that way, so you could use like a regular search tool or something like that for that. But anyway, you could add it if you wanted to. That's the point I'm trying to make. So I have added audio in here, and you can turn these on, turn these off, whatever you want it to search. So it'll search the entire computer for stuff that you need. I guess maybe I could turn the terminal on, but I'm not searching for stuff like that from there. I guess that comes up with terminal applications that you can run, but you get the point. So that's the big major huge feature, bless you, uh, in GNOME 3 that made me want to go to it because a lot of times I'm like answering emails and things like that and I'll need to reference some document or something somewhere and all I got to do is, like I said, just put it in activities mode and start typing and then it just pops right up. Bless you again. So, anyhow, I'm playing with GNOME and it's been fun so far. One of the tricks that I have found for getting Ubuntu 16.04 to work <laughs> is... Go out there and see if you can find, I know this is going to sound crazy to some people, but see if you can find an original ISO from like the day that Ubuntu 16.04 was released and install from there. Right now, if you go to any of the Ubuntu flavors of the Ubuntu website, you download the current version of the long-term support, you get 16.04.2. And it has a hardware enablement kernel in it. I think, what are they on, 4.8 right now, whatever the deal is. And that particular version seems to be a bit unstable to start with. And you, you upgrade the kernel and stuff doesn't work and whatever. So what I have found is, and the reason why I'm having a bit more success with it, is that on my older equipment, you got to remember, I don't have any new computers. All my stuff is at least four or five years old, uh, is to get that original version and then install it, and before you do anything else to the system, I mean anything at all, the next thing that you want to do is to upgrade everything, which will get you all the latest packages. And that's what happens when you start typing and talking at the same time. Anyway, it'll get you all the latest packages, and what will happen is, is that uh, you'll have a much smoother experience. Just upgrade everything and then you can tweak to your heart's content. So for right now, on this particular machine, I'm running Ubuntu 16.04 LTS. Probably going to put Linux Mint back on the laptop, the one that I just showed you, the one that has become kind of my test bed. Uh, not that Ubuntu GNOME doesn't run well on it, but I kind of like Mint on that. I'm getting used to using the GNOME workflow on different machines and I'm kind of more used to Mint on a laptop. But anyway, this is working well for now. And uh, of course, when Ubuntu 18.04 comes along, that is going to be shipping with the GNOME desktop by default. So if this particular installation is still running, I should be able to do a direct upgrade to 18.04. We'll see. Probably won't have it around that long. But it's a nice thought now, isn't it? So anyway, thank you for watching the video, gang. I think I've covered pretty much all I needed to cover. It's just running my mouth and going on and people sneezing in the background and just all kinds of fun for a Saturday morning. And thank you very much for all of your wonderful feedback lately and the great comments and emails and messages on Facebook. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. Check out Easy Linux on the web. So that would be easylinux.com. And also check out FreedomPenguin.com for lots of cool stories about Linux. And we'll have more to talk about soon. Thanks for watching. Oh, I forgot one thing. The picture that's been in the background here, that's my cat Stinky. He was helping me do laundry the other morning. So, <laughs> grabbed a camera, Cynthia did, my fiance, and took this lovely picture. So, this is my background. It's Stinky the cat. <laughs>